So, you came in in the clutch on this one. So, and in people the in the clutch. Yeah, I had Mario was supposed to be doing this with me today, but Mario is sick. Him and his daughter FaceTime me. And Mario and his daughter, they were in rough shape. You could tell they were in rough shape. He was really apologetic. I was like, listen, it's it's okay. I was like, I will, maybe I'll be able to find some sucker on the internet to come on here. I'm a sucker. I and suckered him into it and Mike Nichols. So, I don't know. I mean, people, I mean, you have a YouTube account. You don't really use that, but you do have a big, uh, a big squeegee TikTok account. And yes. you occasionally do some TikToks. Not very few, uh, not very many, but there's very few, but they're really good. I like them. Um, so if you guys are watching this, you can follow Mike on TikTok, big squeegee on TikTok. Mine, mine's goofy. It's just goofy it's stuff. random window cleaning and it usually always leads to something that has to do with fishing or the right. fact that you're getting ready to go or you're working to go fishing. Like <laughs> It's like a, like a thing that you like to do the most, it seems like. <laughs> what else is there? Right. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about going after this. Really? Is there, is it going to, is it going to stop raining enough maybe that you can go? No, you're just going to go anyway. Enough. I can fish in the rain, you know. Okay. Fish are still hungry if it's raining. Even they don't if matter. it's raining. Believe it or not, fish live in water, so the rain really doesn't bother them too much. They don't get wet. Yeah, they don't get rain. wet. <laughs> so, um, how I, – I know that, you know, you, this has been asked before, and people are like, you already asked him this question, and that's cool, but how long have you been cleaning windows? I've been cleaning windows since I was 14. Okay. Um worked with worked with my best at the time my best friend's dad and what he year, had a what year was that it was uh real early 90s okay it was, yeah, I, was, I was probably a sophomore in high school okay and loved it he was um he started a window cleaning business after he retired mm -hmm. and uh, my friend he was he was he kind of he did it when he had to but he really wasn't didn't really jive with it and uh I'm riding around with this with this guy, and we're cleaning hotels and restaurants, and and this was I don't know, 30 years ago or whatever. And he's mm -hmm. he's knocking down like 700 bucks a day back then and paying me 65 cash. And I'm a you know 14 year old kid. That was right. That was money back then, buddy. <laughs> there, was there was something to this. To, I mean, yeah. And not only is there something to it, but I mean, if you think about it, back then in the early 90s. Gas was like just to put it in perspective. Gas was like a dollar, dollar twenty five a gallon. Like at that time for you, how what was minimum wage at for you then? I think it was three ninety. Three ninety. Yeah. Something. Okay. I think when I got out of high school, it was like five something an hour, five twenty five in Ohio, something like that. So I remember paying a dollar. I could if if I went to my grandparents' house, or uh, um. I you know leave my mom's. I ride my bike to my grandma and grandpa's house. Um, spend you know maybe an hour mowing the lawn. I would get twenty dollars, and me and the boys were gonna hop in my best friend's car, and we were gonna have a night on the town with twenty dollars. Right. You right. know what I mean? We were all the soda pop and gasoline we could get going. We got you know. Exactly. So in those, I mean, sixty five dollars a day. At that time, that's not bad money, you know, and I'm sure that you saw this or like, oh, man, I could make some money doing this. So how long was it before you were like, did you like, were you like from that time that you spent with that man, it would it, was it window cleaning the whole time? That's all you've been doing? Or was there a break in between before you decided to start um, the beard guys? <laughs> yes, the beard guys. It was, <laughs> it was always there. I always had a five-gallon bucket with the monsoon. Uh, you know, an Unger Monsoon, an 18-inch Unger Brass Channel, and a mm -hmm. uh, hole, and, um, you know, a jug of Ace Ace Hardware Ammonia. Mm -hmm. that, that was it. It was Lemon, <laughs> lemon Ajax and, and Ace Value Ammonia. It's a man after my own heart right there. <laughs> he was getting the 10% stuff wherever, you know. He was getting mm -hmm. the stout stuff. But uh, I always had, you know, a handful of tools. We used bar mop towels, you know, the old. Right. Uh, and uh, that's all we had. 
uh, straight pulling everything. And um, I always clean went, you know, always had it on the side. I did all kinds. I mean, that, that's a lot of life through there, but I had a, um, you know, moved here for school back in 97 and um, I was maintenance and, and janitorial for, for a church for a couple of years and always okay. Clean. Now, clean. can I, you always clean the, I'm sure you clean the windows there, but can I ask you what you went to school for? It, it was, uh, I went to Bible college. Yeah. Went to, really? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and when you go into Bible college, what profession does that lead one into for those that don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did uh, ministry for 15, 17 years, something like that. So you and I. I mean, we could say this and people are going to know. I mean, you and I could not be, I mean, we're polar opposites. <laughs> and that just, to me, now, and that's, to me, that just goes to show how cool our little industry is in the types of people that it will bring together. Like, I switched out these pants just for this, but my pants that are sitting over here on the chair, your, that pocket knife, you, pocket knife you gave me, I carry that every day. Awesome. awesome. You know, you know the I, one I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got this one. It's from, it's from Jordan Minor at, in Texas. Oh, cool. Yeah. Jordan's also a pocket knife guy too. Yeah, I know. That's cool. I yeah. I'm that. just, uh, you know, I, I, it's really cool that what, what this, like the people, and sometimes you will draw someone into your, to your circle that you wouldn't normally, you know, you know, be like, ah, oh, this guy's not going to be. He's not going to like me at all. You know what I mean? And the first time I met you, you, excellent person. You're like the best dude. <laughs> you're like the best guy. Seth and I still talk privately about meeting you. You know, it was good. You smell good too. Yeah, it was, <laughs> you know, for me, it was, it was at a bar, uh -huh. you know, and I'm like, I'll take a Sprite, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's but fine. It's fine. I, people can intermingle under a common flag, and that is window cleaning. You know what I mean? And, you know, still find each other interesting. And, I mean, you you and, and Mark and, and so many others have, uh, I mean, have been a, a great influence, uh, had great advice. Mm. Uh, learned, I've learned so much, you know. Right. Um, I had the old school way of, of cleaning windows for, you know, I always had the window business on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, actually had a guy that I employed and I, I had my job and, and he actually ran the business, uh, you know, ran the, the routes and, um, and then it just got to be too much, but, uh, and to do both, both jobs. But when social media opened up YouTube and Facebook and, mm -hmm. and there's like, it opened up a whole new world. Like, Hey, there's other people that, you know, I was always fascinated that you can make a living cleaning somebody's window. You know, and that's another thing, you know, for me, I, I mean, I, I've only been doing it 20 years. And when I stopped doing, when I stopped building homes and do work of construction, I went from that straight into this and have, this is all I've done for money to feed my kids for 20 years. It's all I've done. And before social media, I was doing this before social media. I had no clue. Right, right. That there was other dudes. I mean, I, you know, I figured like I'm doing something that maybe two people do. You know what, I mean? right. you know what I'm saying? Like what an idiot I am. You know, it's me and this dude sitting next to me. And then the advent of social media, I come across people like you and I find these groups. Like I find Mark, I find all these people that are doing it too. It's like, it's not huge, but there are people out there that understand what's going on. You know what I mean? They they get what I'm going through, and I'm and I'm excited about it. You know, it's like, hey man, this this guy, you know, he's in Minnesota, or this guy's in California, and this guy's in, in Florida or Texas, and we mm -hmm. all do this. You know, we all there's like a I guess a brotherhood, or or you know, we have a common interest, and yes, it's, it's fascinating to me. I'll, it you know, is. I'll be excited about it. Now, do you? Um, I guess how can I word this without I mean well it's going to be cheesy anyways no matter what but I mean you started out doing this kind of like a part time thing and like you mentioned you were working a job how long did you go before you started are you running the business that you started 
right now or is this a different iteration of it I mean how many times have you gone into business as a window cleaner is this the first one and you're still going strong or we, no? we, changed, we just changed the name okay that's um, I for you know back in the 90s there's a friend in North anyway Northwest Arkansas and, um, he had a, he his name was something and I'm like well I'm gonna be you know prestigious and I was I was just trying to be um, you know, just, just funny about it. Like right. I'm for steep window clean, you know, and, and just, and went off that. Uh-huh. And then for years, it's like, man, I hate this, this name. Every time, you know, it, you get done with the house and the lady's like, okay, who do I write the check to? Prestigious. And then, you know, she's going to say, well, how do I spell, spell that? <laughs> every day for yeah. years, every right. time I just, I'm like, I just hate this name. <laughs> but it's like you got the bank account you got what the car you, yeah at that it. point yeah you, you know you're at yeah. least you're at least going to be prestigious window cleaning until you run out of business cards at least that long <laughs> and you need new shirts <laughs> s-t-i-g-i-u-s yeah. every day right <laughs> and you changed the company name to what it is now correct yeah it and was it, um and then, you know there's a long story there but uh I was listening to these entrepreneur podcasts and, and, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I doing ministry, I mm-hmm. ran children's ministry, pick, you know, a bunch of buses, picking up kids, feeding kids. Mm-hmm. And it, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of hours, a lot of, um, uh, did it for a long time. And it just, uh, finally, you know, the kids thing is not for me anymore. I did it for a long time. And, you know, now my thing is seeing got men in recovery coming out of jail and prison and, and getting mm-hmm. them. Back. Which I think is absolutely, I love it. I love um, it. That, that is that right there in society. I feel like that is one thing that if there's a stigma placed on men that have served their time. Yeah. Um, and they come out and there's like stigma around them. They're not good people. You know what I mean? And they are good people. Um, I've, system, I've recently, system, go ahead. The, the, and the system set up for failure. Mm. And so if, uh, you know, men need, uh, they need a break, you know, if they're right. willing to do the right thing, they need an opportunity and a break. But anyway, I that, completely agree. But I did, I did um, kids for uh, many years and boy, it wore me out. Turned me, but, um, and then stepped out and did just did route work for years mm-hmm. because it was, I had a full, you know, full month of route work, making a decent living. Mm-hmm. And just not twelve dollars of cleaning. List, listening to your music and do and every week it was your same KFC, Taco Bell's, your same McDonald's, your same mm-hmm. and and it was monotonous. I loved it. It was it was a good season of just kind of a relaxing time. And then right. um, the boys started getting older and and like, do I need to start grow? I was always at a critical mass. You know, it was mm-hmm. everything. It, I always had every enough stuff that I could handle and that was it. And then it got to be stressful, you know, trying to do too much. And then, um, those, those podcasts and stuff and, and trying to grow and COVID hit the boys. One kid was in uh, ministry school and that, that shut down because they couldn't do anything. They closed, you know, churches are closed. And then Zane was going to uh, college for sports broadcasting. Well, there's no, there's no uh, sports games. And I was like, right. you guys try this window cleaning thing out. And then a, a, another friend, because I have good relationship with other window cleaners, he's moving out of state. And he has a full time residential business. He sold all quarterly residential, like a full year of quarterly residential. So and you and Mark, I'm like, man, this is risky. I'm terrified of this risk. And you're like, hey, you know, it, by, every day, Mark, <laughs> I'd pay that every day for those. And yep. So yeah, pulled the every day. When you told me that, I was like, man, it's guaranteed, dude. It's he, it's sold. Just the money's there. But it's uh, it's daunting. It's it is daunting. Yeah, and I'm a, sure you don't regret it now. No. It's, <laughs> yeah. I'm but, super stoked for you. That's great. The boys took the, uh, at the same time, I mean, everything happened at once. Just the boys perfectly almost. The and it's grown. They're all running routes. And then, but the, um, 
Like I'd go in firehouse and you know, we do firehouse subs and I'd always mm-hmm. get a sandwich and they, they, they never asked me my name. They just wrote the window guy mm-hmm. on my ticket and I'd be out in public and see a, a subway, you know, manager and she, Hey, what's up? My window guy. And just everybody called me and they said, you know, that guy with the beard and the overalls. Cause I, you know, overalls, mm-hmm. you don't show things and, and, right. uh, <laughs> The the, uh, the name, the you know persona, it was already out there. Right. So I pulled the trigger on it. And we we went with it, and it's now it's a the the whole city knows the window guy. I wonder if I can be a window guy. The window guy. Can I be the window guy in my town, or is that against the is that against the rules? No, uh, you go for it. <laughs> That's such a good name. Because I'll be honest with you. I have customers that I've been working for for 20 years and they will see me out at like Myers or Walmart or at the at the Sam's Club wherever they see me at and they're like hey it's the window guy how you doing man they I you know you know what my name is right I mean you've been you know but I'm the the window guy you <laughs> know so I that's it was that's smart actually I like that way better than prestigious it's yeah, yeah. Who do I make this out to? The window guy. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> now, I, I I will tell you, um, you, how, like, you're get, being all gracious and, like, being like, oh, you guys did this. You guys, like, gave me great advice, whatever. You have completely changed the way that I water-fed pole. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't... I mean, I know, I know it's not something that's, it's not on the market or anything like that, but the, the way that I use it, but the zero right. contact scrubber, that's kind of like, you know, I, it's, it's really good. And I don't know if a lot of people know, there may be some people that know, but probably, probably not a lot of people that know that that's kind of your baby. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually fishing when it, it just poofed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great the idea. The the iteration that I use that, you know, you were nice enough to uh, make for me and send to me because you're like, hey, man, look at this thing that I'm using. And I'm like, he's like, I'm like, can I? And you're like, you want one? And I'm like, yes, I want one of those. <laughs> and that's all I use now. That's that's I love that thing. I, I mean, think everyone should have one. <laughs> it's it's it, perfect. It makes sense. I did a three story on Friday. And those windows have never been, they've never been cleaned. <clears throat> and I'm like, I do not want to climb up there uh-huh. and do that backside by, it was, you know, the backside's on a hill, it's three stories and there's big arch windows. And I just put a little dab of soap on that, on that uh, walnut pad, uh-huh. cleaned all the frames, scrubbed all the glass, and then flipped over and rinsed it. And I mean, it's, it's the same, if you think it's the same, you know, your initial clean, you mop, you take a pad, you scrub the glass mm-hmm. and then you squeeze it. And right. so it's it's the same process, but with water fed. So it's right. It um, works really, really well. It works the 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 way it's attached to the pole. I mean, now everyone's doing that now, but um, the at, for it was it was extremely unique when it when you first brought it to bear. Um, it just stays on the glass. That's the best part of it. And no matter where you're standing at, it's on the glass, and it's getting full contact. Right. So that I think that part of it right there is what really I mean that's the best part of it. It, it come out of necessity, you yeah. know. I, I had a um, scrub pad device that I would use. I'd put a brush in my back pocket and go do all the glass on a house, mm-hmm. and then take that scrub pad off, then put the brush on there, and then come back do the frames and, and rinse. And I'm like, how can I, you know, marry the marry the two what's that old reese's commercial the peanut butter and chocolate you know coming are you a reese's pe- are you a reese's peanut butter cup guy okay Dude, peanut butter cup oh, listen I, I, I want this is what i want to know i, I gotta ask you something since you're a peanut butter cup guy is it just me or has the small ones that are wrapped in foil those don't taste like they used to do they there's something wrong with those ones the only thing that tastes like it used to are the Reese's peanut butter eggs and the, uh, which the holiday ones and the, the actual Reese's cups themselves. Yeah. 
Right. Now, I venture out occasionally into the big cups with, you know, like try it out the one with chips in it, you know, the one with pencils. You know, you got to experiment. Don't get me wrong, but the little ones are a no-go. Right. Well, <laughs> my wife got a bag of them for Christmas, and um, I, I, they just happened to all disappear somehow. <laughs> right. What happened? I have no idea. I have no idea where those went. <laughs> Uh, they never last around my house either, Mike. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We've got a bunch of boys, and uh, you know we'd lock the bedroom door. They think, "Oh, mom and dad are up to something." No, yeah. that's that's where I had all the little debbies. <laughs> the bedroom. What are you doing? I'm in here eating snack cakes. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now, do you? I know you're very. Um, I know you're very active in church, and you like you say you go to groups and stuff like that. Um, do you feel like, um, and I'm sure that it has, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. Um, do you feel like your faith and religion and stuff like that has really helped you out with your business, your day to day business life, and how so? <clears throat> I my ooh. Wow, Steve. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> My name's TJ. <laughs> what did I, what did I say? Hey, well, Steve. Oh, I'm not Steve. I mean, yeah. I'm almost as close. I'm almost as handsome as Steve-O, but not quite. I'm working on it, though. <laughs> uh, you know, my um, interpretation of Scripture is mm -hmm. that, um, you know, whatever, whatever our profession is, that's our calling. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and there's no... You know, your greatest calling is your family. Mm -hmm. And then your um, a, a mechanic has the same, uh, their, their calling is no different than, than some guy that stands, you know, behind a pulpit. It's all, we so, all have a job to do right. wherever we're at. And so where we're at is what we're called to do. And so I, you know, I used to sit in meetings and, and, um, and, plan and organize and do all that kind of stuff and there's nothing wrong with it but being in people's homes being on the street and inter there's I, I firmly believe there's more ministry and interaction since i've become a window cleaner with other with other people and, and ministry that's happened than <clears throat> sitting behind a desk right that's, right so you've kind of i mean i'm a, i mean i'd be I'd be lying if I didn't say you didn't touch my life in some kind of way. You know what I mean? You're a good, you're a really good person. You know what I mean? You're, and you're not afraid to be kind to people. And, and, the re, and it's not any advice you've ever given me, but the way you've handled situations that I won't, we're not going to get into here, but situations that I'm privy to that you have included me on the way you've handled them was very graceful and not in a way that I would have handled it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, it just goes to show the type of person you are. You're a good person. And um, I thought, man, you know, if this was me, I would, and I, you know, and I tell you, if it was me, I would, you know, and I even tell you, like, if you want me to be mean, you tell me and I'll go be mean for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I appreciate it, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> so the way you handle yourself is really, you, you could tell, you could tell you, you're thinking about other people before yourself. So that's good. That's good. There's a lot of people out there that claim to be religious men that don't handle themselves that way and you by far of all the people i know are one of those people that actually live that kind of lifestyle there's not very many people it's very disingenuous at times you know so it's pretty cool mike you should pat yourself on the back if you can reach you're making my eyes sweat <laughs> <laughs> so on a lighter note i just i've I, you know i i know that <clears throat> I know how much that means to you and how, you know, it's part of your everyday life. I'm we're Facebook friends, so I see your sons and you. I see what you guys do on the weekends and Sundays. I know what you guys are up to, you know what I mean, and it's inspiring. So I thought, you know, I'd, I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't ask you that question. So I, I you know, I you know, I don't I don't want people to think that we're going like we're going to like at any moment I'm going to break out my my bible and we're going to start reading scripture that's not what we're going to do i just wanted to do tip my hat to mike mike's a solid guy and i wanted people to know why you're such a solid guy so 
it is what it is, fellas. <laughs> you know, there, there's two um, two virtues that I I hope to possess, and one is you know Proverbs says that a good name is better than riches, or an honorable name is better than riches, whichever. And I I want to have a good name, and um, and and I want to be a peacemaker. You know, uh, Jesus mm-hmm. talked about the, the beatitudes: blessed are the peacemakers, and we need we need more peacemakers. Uh, not only in the world, but in our industry. Mm. Uh, yes. You know, there's so many frivolous things that people, you know, well, this Dawn is better. No, this soap, GG4 is like, this is stupid. Like, what, what does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> what does it um, matter? You know, we, we, um, there, there's other things to be upset about than yeah. you know, wars. Uh, or, uh, that, you know, call back to the episode before this with Chris. That's Chris's mantra. It's like, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. You know, it does not, that kind of stuff. He, and he's coming from, at it from a completely different angle than you are. You know what I mean? So he's not that guy at all, but he's of the same ilk. Like, it just doesn't matter, man. And it doesn't yeah. matter. What really matters is, is that we're all kind of doing our thing and uh, making good money doing it. And um, maybe, um, you know, maybe we can help each other out in one way, shape, or form as a community. That's super important, too. But, you know, how, what kind of squeegee rubber you like or whether you like Dom more than GG4, it really doesn't matter. The results are what should matter. Hey, show me show me your bank account. That's yeah. what matters. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just, <laughs> that's true. That's you can very, talk, you can talk all you want, but show yeah. me that bank account. That's let true. Me, let me see your Roth IRA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is ex- very true. Now, do you find yourself... Are you like the type of person, I mean, the zero contact scrubber, it was something else before that, but uh, the zero contact scrubber, things like that, are you the type of person that likes to tinker? Are you that kind of guy like, I want to do, like, I see this thing, I want to change this, or just, is, is, or is just things come out of necessity for you? It starts at, it's necessity. My mm-hmm. brain is always thinking what, what can, how can this be better? Mm-hmm. Like even, even route, you know, when I was doing route, like, how can this be, how can this be tighter? How can, you know, just, um, always, always improving, which is probably could be a curse at times, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's behind this, this phone, there's, uh, talking guns, screw guns, uh, rolls of Velcro. <laughs> <They're> just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all kinds of stuff going on yeah there's there's something i'm excited one hoping the paint dries so i can go try it out you know and um something i've been working on for a long time that will make um that um that deal that you that you use Uh uh-huh make it possible i hope so oh wow i i hope so i hope so open a whole whole bunch of doors so i i absolutely i absolutely love mine uh, I mean, it's Frankenstein together, and I, you know, people, you want to see it, go look at my TikTok or one of my YouTube videos. So I'm not gonna. This isn't a commercial for that. So Mike starts getting messages about when can I have one of those? Just yeah. <laughs> he ain't got time for it. He was just nice enough to let me try something out, and then I can't say nothing but good things about. It. I love the thing so. Oh, it's awesome, dude. <laughs> you know, necessity. You know, there's there's a uh, you know, some self cleaning or hydrophobic, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. Mm-hmm. Trying to water fit, even using fan jets, rinse bars, whatever. Never seems to want to work the way that it sh- dry the way that it should. It always wants to spot. Yeah, whatever I've tried to do, and and um, like a magic eraser will do something different you know it'll mm-hmm. it'll change that and so what in the same way micro something about a microfiber pad with pure water changes things yeah and it's I different i don't know the science i don't, I don't know, the, know science. the science either but something when you mentioned it to me and we you know we were talking back and forth about it and you're like, I got this thing. I think it does this thing. Will you try it out and see if it has the same results for you? And I mean, that was my message back to you. Is like, I don't know what it's doing, but I like the fact that it's doing it. And it it really does change the way that glass cleans with pure water. And 
there's, I mean, there's a few things that are holding you from making that the way you want to make it. But, you know, like you said, you're getting there. You're getting there. Got your fingers crossed, which is cool. Um, that will be, I think, people, and when the people see, I mean, when you go to my YouTube channel and you see the scrubber that I'm using on my water-fed pole, you're going to be like, eh, I'm, but I'm telling you, just, you got to use it to know what I'm talking about. And I use it, I don't just use it on that, I use it for everything now. Like, oh. that's my favorite brush for like, well, my favorite attachment for my water fed pole. I do a lot of higher stuff. You know what I mean? Like three, four stories. Like, I really like mine for that. That's what I like. I don't, you know, I don't really use too much anything else unless it's got a bunch of spider webs and stuff like that. Then I'll knock out the or really dirty frames. But outside of that, I'm using this 99% of the time. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Well, we got hospital that we just did saturday and, and uh it's all hot really hydrophobic and hard to clean mm -hmm. and that just that just changed changed everything and there's there's quite a bit of glass on that and so you can you can walk away knowing all right this isn't going to look like trash yeah it's going to dry good and i yeah that it for whatever that microfiber is doing with the pure water i'm not exactly sure it's not a special microfiber i mean if oh. this microfiber is readily available at windowcleaner.com just go get yourself a maker pad for your scrubber that's all you need i, I don't i don't know what it, i don't know if it's there's got to be something sciency involved there that neither one of us are going to be able to explain to you <laughs> I, I ain't that smart right <laughs> now this isn't, I mean, you, we've talked, we've talked about, you know, how you got started and all that stuff, but, and you know, what you, uh, what you were planning to do before you started cleaning windows, you're like, I'm going to, you know, the ministry, you're like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to school for this. And this kind of happened. And I think that a lot of people that do this nowadays, and it's just now recently that people are maybe going into business outright like this this i can make money doing this as to when when we started out to this like oh you can make money doing this you know it wasn't you know what i mean there's there wasn't any groundwork there was no youtube there was no go to the window cleaning uh store and buy things and start cleaning windows it was more or less one of those it's almost it was almost like a skilled trade i it can, i consider it one to be quite honest i mean yeah. it's probably not on the higher scale of but to do this efficiently and to get good results quickly um and charge a premium for a service i feel like there's a skill that it's a, it is definitely a skill not everyone can do it and do it for a living you know it's not it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not. I'm a firm believer you can you can do a mediocre job, but if you're just a if you're not a jerk, and if you're nice and 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 have a good attitude mm -hmm. and show up, you know you're you're punctual and uh, consistent, mm -hmm. you'll be successful. I mean, because that's that's you know back <clears throat> back starting out, you know we you had to beat the pavement, go door to door and door to door to. To get accounts, there wasn't uh, Facebook ads and no. and uh, all this. It was um, it was just name recognition, mm -hmm. you know. And being able to be a uh, be personable, you know, talking to somebody. Right. And if if you can accomplish that um, and build those relationships, you know, even if it's you know you're out there straight pulling, leaving a squeegee line every once in a while, you're you're going to be fine, you know. Right. It's uh, I. But, I think that that is probably the one skill that my, the guy that I bought this from, the guy that I started, you know, cleaning windows for initially, that's the one skill that I got from him was his communication skills, the way he dealt with customers and talked to people. That was, I mean, he put a, a squeegee and a mop in my hand, but he didn't show me how to use it. You know, he was just like, figure it out. You know what I mean? Go watch Jeremy do this. You know what I'm like? Okay. But <laughs> the one thing that I did pick up from him that he was really talented at was talking to people. And he was he's not a disingenuous car salesman type. He's the type of guy that John Pruitt can walk into any a gas station anywhere 
and everybody knows John. He knows somebody wherever he's at. And if he don't know somebody, he knows somebody. You know what I mean? He's just that kind of guy. Very nice, fr super friendly guy. Um, I, I grew up with, yes, ma'am, no, sir. That was just kind of how I was raised anyway. So I already come to the table with that, the respect for my elders from jump. But for him to kind of show me how to even talk to people my age or younger and still get that same kind of rapport back and forth with people. I learned that from him. You know, right. the, if you can be kind to people and act, act and be punctual, this is not shouldn't be too hard of a business to yep. get into because the 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 more you do something, yep, the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. So right. I mean, you're not going to start out the best window cleaner in the world. However, you can always start out being punctual and kind to people. You can, right. you know, that's, that's, that you don't have to train a thousand years to learn how to do that. <laughs> you, know, you know, the, the speed will come with window cleaning that, that right. stuff is super day. I mean, you can get that by that, by the bushel full when you wake up every morning. But just building a good, a good reputation and, mm -hmm. you know, being nice to people. And I had a house that, that same house, uh, Friday, uh -huh. the late, the lady's older by herself has this big house that she's having remodeling done and and uh, got the windows done and she needed some screens. I don't build screens. There's one guy in town that does that, and um, but he doesn't put the screens in. And she, you know, just kind of jumped in and like, hey, she needs you know four of these and three of this size. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I can't install them. I'm like, and I told her, well, shook my head and like. I'll come back and I'll put these, when he has these screens ready, I'll put them in for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a big, you know, it's not a big deal, but now I got a customer for life and you took that stress cause she's already stressed out mm -hmm. and you just read the situation. And that's a lot of it is reading, uh, you know, read the room. Right. Uh, I had something similar. Um, I had something similar just happened to me just a few days ago. Um, there was a customer of mine. Um, that I'd been, you know, I do them twice a year. Um, his wife was real sick. She's fine now. She had cancer. She's beaten it. Um, so everything, she's been good for the last couple of years. Well, they decided, you know, we're done living on Lake Erie. We're going to go live where it's warm on the beach instead of cold on the beach. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I had no idea that they had did this, but I hadn't, I didn't do them last year. I was like, you know, maybe she's sick or he's sick or, you know, who knows what's going on. I'm not going to read too much into it. And, um, they, uh, they I, apparently sold their, they were getting ready to sell their house and, uh, I didn't know this and they called me and asked me if I would come and they want, they sold the house. They want me to come and clean the windows for the new owners. We're going to, we've, we're going to pay for it. They Venmoed me the money for it, wow. set it up with the new owners. And they're like, we just, we want to make sure you don't lose that house, Terry. I was like, oh, you know, that's all. You know, build, building trust with with customers is a big. I mean, it's there's a bunch of you know fly by nights and whatever you want to call them, uh, you know, and that they're out there trying or swindling somebody. And if yeah. you can be trusted to be in somebody, you know, somebody's house is their, you know, that's their pride, and they, you know, they put a lot of effort into that, and a lot mm -hmm. of money, and and uh, if they can trust you with their stuff, I mean, that's that. That means a lot, and so they're going to continue to meet you and recommend you. And <laughs> I have other companies I have that way. I, I have codes to people's houses yeah. that live on an island out in the middle of the lake. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, these are multi-million-dollar homes. I'm I've got my goofy self has the <laughs> the garage combination to get into the house. You know, so yeah. <laughs> if you it's very easy to earn that kind of trust. Um, it's, it, however, it is hard to to keep to maintain that. You have to, you have to do right by people. You can't just like weasel your way. Like you said, there's a lot of guys that will say the right things and not do the right things. You know, so it's called integrity. You know, <laughs> it's tough. It's really tough for some people. Now I know you like to. You're, you know, you're, you're, you know, I like, you like to clean windows, you like going to church and you like helping your fellow man and all that stuff. But 
I mean, we, I mean, I, I, I can't, I, we're, we can't do this without talking about fishing. We can't do you, you made, that was a prerequisite that if we're going to do this, we at least have to talk about fishing a little bit. So, so now are you like a fish, any kind of fishing guy? Like as long as it's fishing, I'm cool. We, do you, have you ever been trout fishing? Yeah, we, I lived, uh, lived on white river for a summer, okay. which is trout fishing, you know, in Arkansas, so, I trout I sit out, sit out for days, day and night and trout fish and fry them up on a skillet on the Creek bank, you know, and I've always um, been, I've always been super interested in fly fishing. Now have you, and you, have you done that? That's, that's, you know, that's, uh, <clears throat> rich boy stuff right there. Uh, <laughs> I think of a polite, a polite word. Uh, <laughs> that's above my pay grade. Above your pay uh, grade. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't see any purpose. Like bass, the name's bass fisherman. He likes, he likes bass fishing, but I'm like, why are you going to catch a bass? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not going to clean it, eat it, you know, that's <laughs> my fishing is for, practical reasons the reason why i laugh at that is because my aunt tinny and my uncle Les were mike nichols fishermen amen they were <laughs> mike nichols fishermen what are what are you know we're gonna go bass fishing i'm not going doing no bass fishing why right because yeah. i ain't, we're not eating that are we no exactly well, we're going. What you want is perch, and that's I'm going. They my they yellow perch. They went every day during fish every day. Yellow perch till the bucket was full every day, and I still can't eat perch now because of that. Not because it ain't good or I'm tired of it, but because nobody cooks it like my aunt. My aunt. It's it just doesn't. It's not the same for me. I can't eat fish at a restaurant. You know, even if it's a cat, you know, most catfish places, I, I can't eat their fish because it's just no good. It's not right. <laughs> it's not right. It's not done properly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not much, and this is crazy. I am not much for boats and water. I live right next to one of America's Great Lakes. I live on the shores of Lake Erie. Like you can like walk to the lake right here from my house it'll probably take you five minutes to get there <laughs> um, you got walleye and that's yeah yeah, that's yeah. my uh my new my father just got remarried and um all of his all of my new brothers all of my i have three new brothers now and they are avid walleye fishermen that insist that i will become one <laughs> you will be fishing i'm like man i don't like to fish dude i'm just you know, I would I would go if it was called catching. I would go, but it's called fishing, and that right there is what bothers me about it. <laughs> the way I do it is is catching. Yeah, you, are you a catching? <laughs> it might be some work, but it's catching. <laughs> so I that's really what I'm driving at here is I want to know because I've given we've given you the business about this on the podcast for years now, the catching. Um, <laughs> because you, the 100th episode, you actually won almost every prize on the board from a fishing boat, which is crazy. <laughs> you were watching, you were watching the pod, the 100th episode of the podcast and won our water fed pole and something else while fishing, which was excellent. You're like, I'm in a boat right now. <laughs> so how is it that you do like, there's a, you fish uniquely and how is that? What is that that you do? It's actually I, I learned it when I first moved down here. I I learned it from an old guy at church. I went with him. He was old, had a boat, and I was young. And and um, you know, you learn when you get old. You learn to uh, put the 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 young guys that energy put it to use. And so um, we'd go jug fishing, and he'd use forty Clorox jugs, you know, with with a line and a and a about a two ounce weight and mm -hmm. a couple hooks, and we go get shad get cut bait and, and drop them out in the lake, bait them up and drop them in the lake and sit there and, and let the wind, you know, push them across them flats or whatever. And, and you just chase, you just chase them jugs all morning or all afternoon. And, and them things are just dancing and, 
and it, it never gets old. It, it never, never gets, gets old. Because <laughs> you know, like because I mean it, I mean it's like having like forty fishing lines in the in the lake at one time. <laughs> so you're I'll, always catching fish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not always. There's um, there's been a few times it hadn't been too good, but for the most time, you're going to catch some fish. <laughs> right. So it's all about, and it's all about getting fresh bait. You know, people say, well, catfish eat liver junk. No, these, these blues like, you know, fresh, they're eating perch and they're eating shad and they're eating, right. they're eating you, know, you know, fresh stuff. And so they're eating got, the stuff that I like to eat the perch. Yeah. Yeah. The, the big flatheads, they like the perch, but, uh, <clears throat> and even the big blues, but, um, that's a lot of fun, you know, and I, I've, I'm a tinkerer and I've, you know, went from a Clorox jug to now I use, use styrofoam blocks and I've changed them three different times. <laughs> I, was like, I think, I think I need to make it more narrow so it'll stand up and use a hip, you know, I'm always figuring something different, but I've got it down now. With, <laughs> they're easy to pack up and, and uh, it'll hold a, hold a 20, 25 pound fish. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So is uh, that the only way you, is that the only kind of fishing you do? I'm sure it can't be. No, I like jugging, do rod and reeling. Um, you know, I was, we were rod reeling, uh, in December. It was cold, man. In Oklahoma, these winds, and I'm sure Lake Erie, same way, but these wind, these lakes are shallow. And so when that wind gets up, it'll be, you know, four, white, four foot white caps. We got stuck, uh, when we went, um, December, there's probably a clip or something on there. That wind come out of the other, you know, change directions. When we got done and come into the bay, it was three foot waves hitting the hitting the ramp, and there was all that hydrilla in that bay, and that big old motor could not pull that boat backwards into uh, into that bay to get up on the trailer, and it was just beating the boat up against the bank, and we were stuck. Uh, we were not able to get that boat out and get loaded and a couple duck hunters pulled up and uh they got their waders on and got out there and was able to pull that boat back to where we could get it loaded and and i gave them guys my fish and they're like man you don't have to do that i'm like we'd be sitting here until this wind quit <laughs> right <laughs> I'm like, we weren't, i appreciate it but what was cool with those duck hunters they were coming out to um scout for some ducks for the next morning and uh I was like, well, I know where the ducks are at and pulled up the onyx map and I, I pinpointed and told them where all the ducks were and that's, they dropped a pin and that's where they're hunting the next morning. So I did their scouting for them and they got us, got us off the lake. We, I've had some, uh, my wife went back in the bedroom. I had some, <laughs> some close calls out there. I'm sure. Uh, a couple times and waves are filling the boat up and you're trying to get to the bank or right. lightning storm <laughs> coming out of nowhere. But it I makes I ha I I will tell you this. That is, there's two reasons why I'm not good on the water. First reason is I was six years old, and my step my um, stepdad's brother grabbed a hold of me in my life jacket, my life jacket, and by the collar, and asked me if I could swim. And I said no. And when I said no, he threw me off the boat. And I was like six, five, six years old, and I, you know. It left a mark. <laughs> left a mark. So I can swim. Like I have no problem getting. You know, I could swim, but I'm not a fan of water. I can't see the bottom of. I'm just, you know, I'm not a fan. You know, once somebody else gets in first, then I'm cool. You know what I mean? Like I, once I see that you're okay, I'll get in with you. You know what I mean? And there's the other thing is this: is that my that same stepfather, his dad, my my grandfather, um, my grandpa Otis had a boat and it went in the water every year but as he got older it would go in the water and then he couldn't get it out by himself and he wasn't getting help from everybody else but I would you know I always got tapped on the shoulder to ride the boat with grandpa back to the marina to get the, the boat ramp to get the boat out well mm -hmm. There was one occasion, it was the last time I ever did it, because the occasion before that, the same thing happened. But we go out, and he runs it aground, <laughs> uh, gets stuck, and a thunderstorm rolled in. Like, we were trying to be quick about it. 
the wind was a little up. So it wasn't his fault, you know, but he wasn't really paying too close of attention. And he was one of them old guys that's just like, we start to slow down, just give her more throttle. <laughs> and we got ourselves nice and stuck on a sandbar and a thunderstorm. Come. It was That was probably the single most scariest moment of my entire life. I almost died that day. And ever since then, I'm just like, I am never getting in a boat again unless it is abs there's zero chance of us getting stuck somewhere <laughs> i'll ride on the because i mean i ride quite frequently the ferries back and forth you know drive my right. truck onto the boat and go to the islands to do work and then come back i do that a lot often that doesn't bother me. the only time it kind of bothers me is when the when it's a big chop when it's a big chop i i don't, i'm not a fan that sucks so bad because i'm usually sitting next to an 18 wheeler you know what I mean? And there's a concrete truck on the spinning on the other side of that guy, you know, and the, the milk truck and the beer trucks behind me and then four convertibles and then me, you know, it's it's awful. <laughs> I hate it. So I try to avoid that. But I can understand your love for the water. I get it. The wanting to go fishing. I get it. It makes I mean, I did a lot when I was younger, but not too much now. I probably should, though. Right. In all honesty, I should probably fish more. I learned from uh, an old guy that I fished with when I first moved down here. Now he's he's got heart issues and takes medicine, can't be in the sun. But we still – we go in the wintertime. But um, years ago he said, you can't – I used to shoot ducks and deer and um, turkeys and crappie fish, do everything. Mm -hmm. I still don't hunt. But uh, um, he said, you, you – you're not going to be able to do everything uh, and do everything well. Mm -hmm. So find something you like to do and just do it. So right. I just like to fish. Right. You know, I'm 10, 15, 35, 30, 45 minutes from, from boat ramps all right here. So I can, you know, hook up. I can hook up and go in minutes. and It's all always ready and ready to go. So you have your own boat? Yeah. Yeah. I've got um, – Actually, the boat was built for duck hunting back in 06, and um, I think it was last two winters ago, the wife was sitting over there, and it was the eve of our anniversary. She said, how much is a brand new boat? I was like, $60,000, and, and she goes, what? How much would a payment on that be? And I'm like, we don't, want to, we don't want to buy a new boat, and uh, I ended up getting a, a bigger motor and, and stripped my boat. Um, you know, my boat means a lot. My kids grew up in the boat. My dad, um, you know, he, my late father, a lot of fishing trips with him. He would come, he would, he was an hour, hour away. He would come down here and we'd fish in my boat. Had, so you know, it's got a lot of sentimental trip. value to it. You know, his last fishing trip, the last good pictures I have of him was, you know, we were in, in that boat and, uh, story. I can uh, totally understand that. Me and, a, me and another guy, are, we're working jugs. He take he was the only one that could drive my boat. Nobody, like, you don't touch my boat. He was the only one that I would let drive my boat. And he, he's driving the boat, and um, he goes, hey, you boys want some eggs for breakfast? I'm like, eggs for, all right. I'm thinking, he brought some food, and he's got all these Walmart sacks. You know, he's got his Dr. Peppers, and, and he opens a bag up and throws us a bunch of Cadbury. <laughs> 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 So, my grandfather yeah. hated Cadbury eggs. I wasn't allowed to have Cadbury eggs in the house. They were not allowed to go in my Easter basket. You want to know why? Why is that? Because rabbits don't make chicken noises. There you go. There you because go. of that commercial. That com it really? drove him insane that they had a rabbit doing chicken noises. It drove him nuts. He's like, I, you, for the life of me, I can't understand what, why does that rabbit have to do bird noises? <laughs> he, it, it was just like, it bothered him. I don't know why it bothered him, but it was, Cadbury eggs were a no-no because of that rabbit. And I always, that yeah, that commercial, that rabbit, I just, for whatever reason, I've gone my whole life with this stigma over Cadbury eggs. <laughs> Hey, the commercial worked though, you know. It worked, yeah. <laughs> so, but I ended up stripping my boat. Um, had some welding work and some pods welded on, and mm -hmm. that give it better flotation in the back and a bigger motor. And 
electronics and a remote control trolling motor and, and spent a whole lot less than 60,000. I mean, I spent hardly anything, but that thing will go, uh, 31 miles an hour about, you know, with just me and that for a 16 foot boat, you know, a, a heavy flat bottom. That's, that's pretty good for, for around here. Do you, do you go by yourself? If nobody else will go with me. <laughs> if nobody else will go with me. <laughs> I, ran, I ran some trot lines during Christmas, you know, and, and it's just right, you know, 10 minutes down the road, there's a river here and I'd load and unload and it was cold and, and, uh, put six gallons of fillets in the freezer, you know? It's, well, that's kind of like my thing is like, uh, even if, uh, I mean, I could literally grab a pole, my pole and my toggle box, which I do have, um, and walk five minutes and be fishing in the lake, right? <laughs> I might be coming to Minnesota in uh, Ooh. in the summer. I've got a friend up I there. I live in Ohio. Well, how how far is uh, it. Brainerd? How far is Brainerd from Sandusky or wherever you're at? I know where you're at, but um, I don't know. It's not too anyway, far. Be- it's not too far. Yeah, I'll Google it. I might be driving up there just to do some fishing. And when it's hot down here, it's, you know, it's like uh, 75. Right? Yeah. The only thing that's not cool about that Wisconsin is the winter. Yeah. <laughs> the winter is not cool up there. I would not want to be there <laughs> in the winter. I found a cabin in Minnesota and it was, it was pretty inexpensive. And, um, the wife was not a fan, but I was. It was right on the lake. I'm like, I'll just go there for three months. You know, we could go there for the summer and mm-hmm. come home. You know, and, and uh, that didn't happen. How long have you? Uh, how long have you been married, Mike? Um, sorry, did I put you on the spot? I didn't put you on the spot. Did I? <laughs> Yee! I think we've been married. I think 14 years. Okay. I think we've been 14 years. <laughs> he said, I think <laughs> you went back. A minute ago, she was dancing. She was over there trying to distract me, and she was doing her weird white lady dance. <laughs> I have uh, I, there's videos of my wife doing the same exact weird lady white white girl dance. <laughs> same same dance. I, I already know the one you speak of. <laughs> Is there jazz hands involved? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Do you see yourself? How long do you see yourself staying on the glass as, you know, because I know you've got young bucks underneath you that could probably at one point take over the whole show and you just be a fisherman, but, and, uh, and a bookkeeper, but how long, how much longer do you think you're going to want to clean windows, be on the glass? I mean, do you still enjoy doing it? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I do enjoy it. I like being on the glass. It's my, um, Zen. my exercise and it, and I'm a people person and I really I don't know if I could sit at home all day that just drive me crazy but I, the we've got some mid-rise you know what I consider big commercial work mm-hmm. and I, I see myself always um, I really I really enjoy it I, I enjoy the I drive by that that big building you've probably seen some pictures of oh yeah it. I drive by it you know, every month and I drive through the parking lot and just look at that thing. And I, I clean that building. Yeah. You know, and that, <laughs> I'm the I same way. It. I love it. It's like, man, I'm, I'm the only guy in this town that can, that knows how to clean that building. And there's some, so the, we got a museum and some stuff that, um, you know, we're, we're the only guys in, in the area that can handle that kind of stuff. And I, I always plan, I plan on always cleaning windows. I've got, uh, my middle, Middle boy Asa, he was helping Saturday. He graduates in May, mm-hmm. and he's coming up full time. You know, and, and I, I'll work him between me and Zane until he's um, until I'm confident in in what he can do, and confident that he can handle customers and the job, and and then turn him loose. Mm-hmm. There is the possibility, you know, with with WCR, and it might turn into a full time job. You know, that's that's a possibility. So right. Oh, you mean uh, the scrubbers? The scrubbers. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sure yeah. that's that's. I'm sure that's already a monumental task to keep up with already. 
So I know okay. what I know what Richie from Maker 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 Products goes through, trying to to deliver his handmade good. You know what I mean? So it's that's that's a lot to take on. Um, yeah. I mean, you've got the business, you've got the family, you've got you know other responsibilities, and then to add that to your plate, that's commendable that you're able to even keep up with that. Well, it's it's um, you know my my goal is that the boys that want to be a part of it they can have a piece of it you know and they can have a piece of it forever and and grow like zane's taking his piece of this and he's you know he just poloed me we use marco polo by the way not mm-hmm. boxer but uh he's like hey um uh, i'm doing such and such you know we picked it up every, you know for this much a month i'm like okay cool you know and it, it's all the time he's give him a piece and he just has taken it and that's great man that's great way he made his own name and um uh, he, gets, he gets paid well uh you know but he's making the business money too so right that's great man i um i have a you know i've got a 10 year old that has not shown any interest in anything like that <laughs> now my daughter uh my oldest daughter um she knows how to clean windows but I, I really don't think i think for her it was more she's like she didn't she didn't she didn't see the revenue she i think she that kind of went past her now my my middle child Lena, she is of the mind that she sees its potential but not only does she see its potential for what the kind of money that she can make, but she also sees the potential like you do. And like, I'm going to be able to go fishing more. Elena's of the mind. She's like, I'll be able to go and take pictures because she likes, you know, photography. She's, she's more of an artsy fartsy type. You know what I mean? So right. she sees that she sees it for its flexibility. You know what I mean? For the most part, you know, she sees it as she, I can do this and this. You know what I mean? I can do two things. So, you know, Noah, Noah just come in. He's, I'm sure he's done with his, his list for the week. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got the same stuff he does every other week, but he's going to uh university of Arkansas full time. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got a full schedule, <clears throat> but he works, you know, sometimes he can get everything done. He'll work late. I mean, eight or nine o'clock to get all of his, his route done. Mm-hmm. Um, and he used to work, have a weekend job and, um, he does better running right. around day to half, half a route. Um, yeah. he, he's done for the week now. He can get all of his homework done, and it's great for college. You know, a college student. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think I don't think a lot of people re- maybe realize. Um, I know a lot of people kind of scoff at route work. You know what I mean? And I don't. You know, there's there are there are those out there like I'd rather just do residential. You know what I mean? There's something to be said about a nice route. A nice, yep. solid route of work to do. You know what I mean? And you know what's going to be there every month or every other week. Just like it's going to be there for me to go do. I really like that. Don't you find that that's, I mean, that's what I like about it. I mean, it's, that you know, when I did route full time, the it, it was a good living. Mm-hmm. For, for where I'm at, it was, it was a good income. And you can make, you know, you can add some houses here and there or whatever and make some you know, make more income, but I had a full, I will still do a full month of, I knew we we're going to make, you know, around X amount mm-hmm. a, a year and it's, and it's steady. You don't have to worry about it. And, and so it's turned into now, um, I've got one full time and one part time running around. Right. And, and, and we could grow that if we wanted to, right. you know, we're in a we, we have just enough manpower to for what we got, right. and uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, that's can... where I'm at. You know, I, as a as a just a solo guy on the glass, I've got you know, I've got I don't have just enough for one guy, but I'm getting to the point where you know <laughs> it could get out of hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I've taken a lot of calls for estimates this year. A lot. I've gotten a lot of jobs this year, and I overpriced them and still got them i'm like good lord but i, I went up two dollars two dollars a single hump you know single or double hump mm-hmm. went up and uh I'm not our, having any troubles <laughs> not a, I'm not having trouble and we we raised our prices mm-hmm. we just got done raising and and um 
you know, did a letter uh, a month ahead of time and we have had no pushback and I can't, you know, I thought, well, we'll lose a few and that's okay. Cause we'll make up, you know, uh, right. Or, and we, you know, it wasn't too crazy, but we, we just brought everything level across the board where everything's, you know, um, at the right price rate. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm stunned and we, you know, and people, people are willing to pay those rates for, for where I'm at, you know, and, and right. we're a weird economy, you know, we, uh, you know, Fort Smith, Arkansas, it's like 30 something percent poverty rate, you know, wow. which is just high for, yeah. Yeah. But it's, on the other hand, it's, it's also booming. They're building, you know, the, um, uh, military bases out there and they annexed a whole bunch of property to the, to the uh, city and they're, it's just exploding. There's a, a we got met, uh, medical college and uh, just business and apartments and you know college uh, dorms and all that's just mm-hmm. it's and, and more factories. It's so it's kind of it's really been booming here in the last couple of years. All of that stuff that's popping in there is just that's good for you too. You know, so, I, I mean the, the doctor's offices are I mean doctor's offices are that's ooh. You know, I, you know, nine times out of ten, you don't ever have to do the inside of those. You know, <laughs> it's just the outside uh, of those. Are, that's good route work, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah good route work. Shop, all yep. that stuff. Yeah, so, got got a dentist shop. They just they just opened up a two story facility that's ortho, uh, oral surgeon, and and everything in a in a huge complex, and we'll probably be doing that quarterly. You know, and that's. Nice. And it, but it just keeps it just keeps growing. So it's been, it's a weird economy. But um, you know, we we've got some competition. Mm-hmm. But we, I don't, you know, you know, <laughs> you know some stuff. Yeah, I know some things. You are again. You are the sweetest guy. <laughs> you are. Okay. You could be you. I you know you again. You would have handled that. I I showed you what I would have done. <laughs> Or I would have told him, and you're like, "No, nah, this is what I'm going to do." And I'm like, "Man, that is so good." <laughs> I mean, although I tend to agree with your wife, that is super petty, <laughs> but it's it is a non confrontational way of being like, "Okay, guy, you want to do that? Well, here's this. You're gonna enjoy this." <laughs> I mean, because I mean. If if at all else fails, at least he's making money, right? <laughs> You're kind of helping him out a little bit. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. Actually, actually, I got that job. She called me the the video. I said she called me a week and a half later, uh-huh. and I went by. And I bid it for not that, right? Uh, and so I, I did it last week in the rain. Oh, good for you! <laughs> good for you. <laughs> uh, I was hey. afraid to say that. <laughs> and, that and that's actually. <laughs> Like when she called, I felt bad, and I'm like, okay, I probably need to not not be doing that. It's uh, anyway sabotaging somebody <laughs> <Right>. else. <laughs> now I see you guys are are all you guys running around in little vans, or is that just you that runs around in little van? You all have the little Ford Ford vans. Ford vans. We got three vans. Um, I like the vans for the fact that you know I always had a truck. I always worked out of a truck, but with the um, I like a on demand system. And when, you know, here it'll like last week we had four days of ice uh-huh. and then now it's 50 something degrees today. And right. They, and they, we could have winter weather this coming Friday looks like. And so it's, it's just up and down and with the vans, I put a little electric heater in there at night. Mm-hmm. If we, you know, if it's going to get down in the twenties or teens and, uh, but with the truck, I'd have to unplug all the pumps, you know, it's yeah. mounted in can take the di tanks or whatever take it all inside and it was just a hassle so the the vans they're they're you know we don't have as much storage as we as i need as i want but so the vans have everything everything you need you know it's like it's own little garage too so right i i i gotta say i think that's what i'm i i work out of a pickup truck now um i've always worked out of pickup trucks i also I'm a big believer. I have, you know, a, a tanner skid in my truck. Um, it's just a time saver. Um, yeah. I'm not hunting around for anything. I'm most likely going to. Um, I have a an X2 because I have the uh, the Max. I have a I have a Max. I have a Max as well. 
but uh, the X2 got stuck out in the cold, unbeknownst to me. Um, shop heater um, went bad and it swollen popped. I lost the DI cartridge and the sediment cartridge on it, but the the uh, the R the the RO membranes, the tubes, the stainless steel tubes are fine. So I was just, I think I'm going to take that apart and uh, make a rack for it underneath my toolbox for now. And that way, if I need to make water on demand, I can. Um, and I've got, uh, I've got all the stuff to charge it as well as I'm rolling. I got, you know, a 12 volt system. I'm just going to, that way I can just charge it as I'm going to. But I have to take it out all the time. You know, there's always a reason I have to take it out of it. I think I just want to do the, just buy a service vehicle, park it in the shop, and just buy myself a putt-putt truck around. I, I actually have two trucks already. So I, I probably just hang on to one of them and just take all the window cleaning stuff out of it and put it in a van and take the van to the shop and leave it there. It's it's nice having it. Yeah. I mean, if I need something... I pull out a tote and there's, you know, part extra parts and piece. There's, you know, so you much easier for your backups in the van. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I wrote an article uh, for American window cleaner magazine about having backups. You know what I mean? Really? It's all, it's yeah. It's, it's nice to have a backup because backup. you never know. Yeah. Backups are backups. Cause you never know. I even have one. I got a spare 12 volt pump. You know what I mean? I, I, Took yeah. something back. They wouldn't give me my money back for it. They're like, we'll give you $150 store credit here at the TSC. And I'm like, you know what? I'll take that right there. And I just took the extra 12-volt pump, slid it in the truck. So even if that goes bad, I'm ready to go. You know, I just do undo a couple of bolts, slide it on, put the plumbing back together, good to go. Back on the yep. glass. <laughs> Which happened last year in the middle of a huge job. Yeah. That's I had to uh, uh, put an extra pole on uh, for the job we did Saturday. And I, you know, got a split valve on that DI tank. Mm -hmm. I just ran a hose off it, and, and uh, I was able to take 300 foot off the van and go one way. And I put my boy Asa, you know, 200 foot the other way, just just running off, you know, water pressure in the DI tank. Mm -hmm. So that worked well because. My old pump is bad. I guess it froze. Oh, really? And, but I mean, it. I've been replacing them with the the C flow one. I like that one point six gallon a minute. They're seventy bucks. And I've been using one for over a year. If it burns up, it's seventy bucks. You know. What if I? I can't. I get mine at uh, TSC, of course, and mine is eighty nine dollars, and it's five gallons per minute, and. Yeah, and for tw I'll show I'll show you a picture of it. <laughs> I'll send you a picture of it. It's like eighty nine dollars, and you pay twenty dollars. And if anything goes wrong with it at all, for two years I'll take it back. I haven't bought a pump in f four years. I haven't bought a pump. <laughs> like because <laughs> when they when I when I turn in the old pump. Another twenty dollars will get me another one, you know. <laughs> yeah, <Wow>. so <laughs> I'm paying twenty dollars for it. And Mark, you know, Mark Mark's like got this really nice pump because Mark's the kind of guy he wants you know, he wants the finer things in life when it comes to equipment because he'd rather not he'd rather he, not mess with it, you know. But I'm of the mind like I will replace that twenty I'll replace that twenty dollar pump ten times before I spend six hundred dollars on a pump. I'm not gonna do that. You know, it's just me, you know. I'm, yeah, that's why I use that seventy dollar pump. Like, <laughs> hey, I, got, I got a spare. Yeah. It'll take me five minutes to swap it out. Right, right. I'll send you a picture of mine though. It's off brand. Five gallon five, five gallons gallon, a minute. Yep. Man. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of flow. I run I, I don't even, like, I, I could park a mile away from a place, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just throw an extra 5 sixteenths on the end of my, my supply, because I got the 5 eight supply line. I run that out, probably got like 150 foot of that. And then after that, I just run, and it pushes all of it, way up in the air, too. It does good. Yeah, it does real good. <laughs> and Mark's got it hooked up, or has it, where... I've got a, a a line that comes off my battery on my truck 
that runs back to charge. So I'm using my alternator on my truck to charge that. So uh, uh, insulator. Is it insulator? Yeah. Well, it's got a. Yeah, it's got. You got. Well, it's. I will tell you. It's an extension cord. Um, <laughs> a black heavy gauge extension cord because you know Mark it made sense when Mark said it. he's like well somebody's going to look at that on your frame and think that it's just a line you know they're not going to think and it works perfectly fine I got an inline fuse in it it's hooked up to the battery it just and the back battery and yeah and I got a little little uh, socket and I stick my two uh, gator clips on and plug the pigtail in boom you're done it's like a car cigarette lighter thing bloop and it just charges it as you're driving. It's never going to go over that. You know, it's going to maintain the 12 volt charge. So, and then as yeah, I mean, it might drain the truck battery a little bit too, but not bad enough to where you're going to have to get a jump start. You right. Know, but oh. it, I've not had a single issue. I when Mark told me about it, I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, man. You know, Mark's, uh, you know, Mister Automotive." So I just took him for his word. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I could change yeah. brakes and stuff. You know. <laughs> You heard the uh, the uh, the whiny, what I thought was a power steering pump for how many years? For a year and a half that was like that? And, you know, come to find out it was a pulley. Really? A $20 pulley. <laughs> Just learn to live with the whine. Listen, I, did, I don't know that much about that stuff. Jennifer probably knows more about cars than I do. You know, I, I think Jacob Williams still gets out of his passenger side door because he hasn't fixed the driver's side door for probably three years. <laughs> probably twenty dollars. Probably twenty dollar latch. Probably know? twenty dollar latch. <laughs> I thought that it was going to be this huge ordeal. I'm like, man, I looking at prices for alternators are so expensive, and right. I'm just like, man, this is going to suck so bad. And it just happened to be in a time where. Um, you know, my wife was transitioning and work and stuff like that. So I was the sole provi provider there for a little while. I was like, man, I can't afford to, I'm just, it's, it's still charging the battery. I mean, the guys just don't like it when they, and it only got like that when it was cold out, you know, it wasn't terrible, you know, so it, I didn't bother me. I just turned the radio up. Who cares if Mike can hear it while I'm doing my YouTube video, you know, who cares? Mark got in the truck. He's like, dude, will you just replace that? He's like, it's been a year, man. You, come on. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with it. It works fine. He goes, it sounds t terrible. I was like, I promise I'll replace it. So like several weeks after he was here, I was like, I took it to a buddy. And he's like, oh, it's not the alternator. It's this pulley right here. And he takes a, a breaker bar, pulls the belt back, slides the pulley off. And he's like, and then lets it back down. He's like, yeah, see, it's the bearings are bad. I was like, you just did that without any tools. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, they come right off. <laughs> yeah. My word, Mike. Yeah. You know how embarrassing that was? <laughs> I was just, I was like, how much are those? He's like, yeah, like, it was I, as low as 12 bucks, no more than 20, though. It was like $18. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I'm not. It, listen, <laughs> it, it is what it is. I don't know how we got on this subject, but I'm. It was oh vehicles. I, Mark Tanner. I Mark Tanner the vehicles, but we were talking about the charging system. Mark and the the yeah. charging system. Yeah, works good, man. I, I find. I, still, or, I, I yeah. I know. I I know. For you, it's all about being efficient, right? I mean, that's that on demand system is nice. Just. It's there, boom, go. You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, We I put a uh, accumulator in mine just because mm -hmm. I don't even know. Um, I've got the one boys too. Do, I, I built um, the, the one, the system in the boys' van, and I think I got 600 bucks in it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, use Flexzilla hose and hose reel, you know, Flexzilla hose reel, C-float pump and toggle switch and battery and, uh, th they got 35 gallon tanks because um, I got a deal on them, you know that kind of thing. You have two tanks. Uh, it 35 in each van. One oh, each okay, van. okay. I got a 50. So, I, mine's a 50. My van's a 50, but it's. I mean, I got that fill and go, but I bought it from a, a car lot. The guy bought a van from a uh, an auction and didn't know what that thing was, and I really. I went and bought it for 900 bucks. Get out of here. <laughs> I actually have some parts off of that that I'm I'm going I'm studying on probably integrating into mine this year. 
I like I like a lot of flow. I don't know, you know, I just never turn my flow up or down and, mm-hmm. and uh, have to recalibrate here and there. I just flip a switch mm-hmm. and that's it. You know, I don't. Yeah, it's just something about being able to, you don't have to worry about finding a, a water spigot, a electricity socket, nothing. You just run the hose off the truck, flip a switch, you're cleaning windows. The hardest I'm, part about it is winding the hose back up. Right. <laughs> boys have a tube inside mm-hmm. uh, they open the door and just grab grab their short pole and brush because they're i mean we use ours for route work but we do not clean front doors with with water <laughs> but I, there's it, there's several places that i that i do same thing yeah it's right you know it's just easier grab it flip the switch walk to the other opposite side of the building pull the hose out water fed all the way back, wind it up, turn it off, and done. I mean, right. it's... There are some places that I don't feel like it's good to use it, you know what I mean? Like, on routes, there's some route jobs, Just it's just easier just to do it by hand. But right. there are some other jobs that it just makes money, and yeah. it makes sense. You know, like, there's jobs that I do weekly that in the summertime on a Saturday where I'll get up super early in the morning, I'll have six restaurants done on the outside before the sun is like a third in the sky. You know what I mean? And I'm back home where I want to be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> getting ready to do something with the family, laying around in the pool, whatever the case may be. That's, it's nice. And in those in instances like that for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, you can't use it for everything. You no. just have to have the, the know how to. I, do you, and do you, could you kind of feel like that's something in, uh, in this industry that, you know, that like a lot of people aren't realizing that, you know, it's not for everything. Water fed pole is not for everything. I feel like it's, you know, that's, I sometimes I'm wondering like why, like people should probably, there should be more onus put on that. Like, um, do you, when you train your, when you've trained the boys, did they learn how to washer and squeegee before they learned how to water fed pole? Right. So. I start, we had, uh, Kid working as one of the uh, friends of the boys. He worked for us th- through the summer. He's a lineman now. Actually, he got out of high school. And he's a lineman. Wow. Kids, kids, brilliant. That dude, I'd pick on that kid. I love him to death. But I mean, <laughs> family friend. And uh, but uh, you know, I just put him in front of me with a mop. That's how I start. Here's a mop. Here's a pole. You mop. I'm gonna squeegee behind, and I'm explaining. You know. Uh, and I'm, I'm just trying to explain while we're going. And so I'll have That's a mop. the same way I teach. For, for a while. And then, uh, all right, you see me, you see me squeegee these windows. Here's, here's a mop and a squeegee. And then, and then kind of watch him and, and work side by side for a while and, mm-hmm. until he's picked that up. And That's then, the same way I do it. I've, that's the way I was taught is, uh, there, when I started working in window cleaning, I was the washer guy. I got everything wet. I got scolded when I banged into the tops of the frames. Like, no, that's not how you do that. <laughs> um, uh, but I, you know, I was taught like, you know, once you learn how to, once you master scrubbing the window, then getting the water off will be easy. And it was true, you know, because the the squeegee. I mean, it takes although it does take some time to learn that. It makes it a whole hell of a lot easier when once you've muscled that the heavy washer around for a little while then you know kind of makes things a lot easier get the technique down that way and, and you're watching you know it's hands-on mm-hmm. you got somebody explaining and it's <clears throat> you got kinetic learning and and you know visual and, and all that all all together so mm-hmm. that's how i learn so i can't i can't just be told how to do something i've got to put my hands on it and see it, it see it to see it and feel it to do it i'm the same same way if there's a YouTube video on it, I can do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That includes electrical and nuclear engineering. I can do both. <laughs> I just need a YouTube video. I need Steve O to do one on uh, pulley maintenance on the front of Ford Motors, and then I'd be in there like swimwear. <laughs> Ford Ranger. Right. Yeah. yeah. I still have my Ford Ranger. It's in the shop. I get it out. It's super loud. It's got a hole in the exhaust. So I, I, get, I only use it on Saturday mornings really early to go to the landfill. That's all I use it for. 
My neighbors love it. <laughs> the hole small enough just put some JB Weld over it? No, it's not that small. It's more like you got to cut a pop can and use some JB Weld. You got to make a patch on that. <laughs> An old license plate wrap yes. around. That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> Back welded. Back welded. <laughs> So you don't ever see yourself quitting window cleaning, which I, you know, that's admirable. You know, you're like, if as long as I can do it, why not do it? I'm the same way. It's just like, a, it's kind of Zen for me. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of reset I myself, you know, and I, it, it, it affords me a little time to think about things. You know, I'm right. just doing, I'm doing a task and I'm able to think and it just, it's the, the window cleaning itself is all, it's automatic for me at this point. You know, I'm not thinking about, oh, I got to make sure I get that spot off. I know that spot's not going to be there because I've scrubbed a million windows. You know what I mean? You know, it's going to come clean and I'm going to wipe my edges and I'm going to get to the next one. There's nothing better than that. I like to listen to audio books. I used to be really big into podcasts. Do you listen to podcasts or audio books? Or what, what, do you listen to anything while you're cleaning glass or no? I'm always. I'm good either music. On the phone. Always got good music. You always, you always post some pretty sweet tunes you look like a steely dan guy <laughs> noah, noah has listened to nothing but steely dan for four months so he could be uh, the top listener spotify's top listener of steely dan like he's listed and he's listening to nothing but steely dan for four months straight good for you <laughs> but Noah, i mean i i listen to uh I listen to some church stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's in, in teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but sometimes I get in, you know, I've got my people I follow and listen to. And but sometimes I've got to get into just some, um, just some music in the background. And, uh, and it could be, you know, Dylan or the Beatles or. I was hoping uh, you were going to say you listen to the Squeegee Life podcast, but you don't. Well, well I, I tried. <laughs> you try to watch that live. <coughs> Uh, yes, um, you know Wednesday nights was easier for me. I know. I catch the end on Thursdays, but uh, um, just I like music. Um, you know the old, you know that genre of the John Prine and Guy Clark, and and it just sometimes I need some just some music in the background just to kind of veg out. Sometimes mm. I've um, I've got to I've got to learn something you know i've got to have have something to to uh interact in my brains so do you uh do you by chance do you have uh do you have any siblings i have two half sisters two one's half -sisters. in vegas and one uh, has been two years clean and uh doing really good, good. To her and I, I just um uh, proud of both of them they've awesome. come we we all had some rough stuff, and right. I've, come, I've come out of it a lot sooner than the rest of them did. So right. I, they, I was I was always wondering. I didn't. I I always wondered if you had uh, any siblings, especially a, a younger or older brother or something. So it's cool that to know that you had some sisters. Yeah, and, but I you know I was so much older. So uh, oh okay. It's like my young. Uh, my youngest sister, we're 11 years apart. So, Oh yeah, that's, that's a difference. And she's still my, like she was, uh, I sent her flowers on her, on her one year clean date, you know, to work. And she, she refinishes the, this high dollar furniture, like lacquers and sprays and does some high end, some really artsy fartsy stuff. And, and, uh, is really good at that. She's really, um, uh, excelling with that. So that's, that's, that's really, Probably. You just yeah. got to find a passion, something to pour your energy into to, you know what I mean? And I've got a nephew, um, he's doing kickbox. He's like, I think they got a, uh, he's going to be in Missouri this weekend. And I think it's on pay-per-view. Really? He's, he's doing cage matches and he, yeah, he's like 21. Uh, Brendan Nichols, look him up. Dude. Okay. I'll send, I'll send you his send, last spot. Yes, definitely. He's, He's. Do, have he, you told Steve O? Have you have, have you told Steve about him? Yeah, yeah. I sent. Okay, uh, okay. Sent the, I'll find. I'll Definitely, because Steve O and I are closet MMA fans. That's 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 our thing. I I, I I really follow it. So that's cool. But he's he's uh, I mean he's he's doing really well with that. He's come a long way. But he he, man, I'm watching like man. He 
he does not he didn't feel that hit and he's I mean, <laughs> yeah. he, he, Still, he's got that that quiet rage and just still going for it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this I'm guy. not I'm not built like that. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Hit me in my eye. <laughs> You're gonna fight me. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna fight dirty and I'm gonna win. And it's gonna be quick. Right. I want it up. <laughs> yes. I'm not. Yeah. I told my my little brother that he was talking about. You know, there's gonna come a day. Where you know he's gonna get me, you know what I mean? He's like, you know, you know, I'm gonna get. I don't care if we're both old and you're in a wheelchair. As soon as you go in a wheelchair, I'm getting you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, just I'm gonna let you know now that day is never gonna come because I'm gonna do whatever it takes <laughs> to remain superior. I'm gonna my my record versus you is gonna remain untarnished. <laughs> these these boys, I still have my bluff in. They think I can, you know, I can still win, which I can, but. <laughs> I might be taking some ibuprofen in the morning. Right. But, uh, <laughs> now we have me and my brother. We have well, I, we're you know there's uh, fourteen of us boys, all cousins, and you know me and my brother. My brother being the youngest boy, and me being the second youngest. But I'm older than my brother by ten years or so. And um, my my older cousin, who's like ten years older than me. My younger brother it was like, you know, I think I can take you. And I just looked at him, and we're standing out here in front of this house that used to be my grand, grandma and grandpa's at the time. It's Thanksgiving. We're out in, the fr out in the street throwing the football like all American families should on Thanksgiving. We're throwing the football. This is back when I, before I started cleaning windows, I could actually still throw a football. I can't throw a football anymore. But uh, he's like, I think I can take you. And I was like, I, you know, I just don't agree with what you're trying to do. And Mike told him, he's like, listen, I'm telling you, I'm just going to warn you right now. I'm not playing around. If you shoot on me, you're going to regret it. Because he's like, I'm not sweating. I'm not getting dirty. You know, he was like, oh, you know. So he, my course, my brother, feeling a little lively, shoots on him, goes for his, goes for his legs. He's going to try to take him down. My cousin immediately grabbed him by his shirt, pulled it over his head, and dropped on him, fell right on him in the grass, and then proceeded to rug burn, noogie him, and rug burn. I just, he was, it was so mean and nasty. He, his shoes were, had grass stains on him, his pants, his forehead, he had grass in his mouth. It was brutal. I felt so bad for him. I was like, listen, man, don't ever think that just because somebody's old, they're not willing to do what it takes to to hurt you. <laughs> my, my boys, they say old man strength. Yes. <laughs> it, That's it a thing. Is. That is a thing. <laughs> There's just, my, my friend, uh, old black preacher, I mean, he's old too. And I'm like, let's arm wrestle, you know, him and. Uh, he he always would smoke a brisket or something. He calls me up, and I got to come by and get a sandwich. I love that guy. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm like, let's arm wrestle. And that dude, I mean, he's like 60 years old. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty stout yeah. myself. And I mean, he just he just waylaid me. I, just, I, I didn't see it coming. I There's really levels to it. There's levels to that old man strength. There's levels to it. Old man, <laughs> boys like to. We got a, a brother Harold. We call him. I love the guy. He, uh, my boys like. He was. He's a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. You know, seventies has like half a lung missing from Agent Orange and oh. uh, little guy. I mean, just little bitty guy. But all these young guys want to want to arm. Uh, all these men's meetings. They're like, I, I want to arm wrestle. Let's arm wrestle. And he'll sit there and just whoop every one of. Them. He's in his seventy. <laughs> He played uh, uh, at the time a nineteen-year-old kid, uh, Stephen Paul. If he sees this, I don't uh, think now you'll know you're being made fun of. He played basketball and whooped a nineteen-year-old kid. You know, <laughs> oh man! man you know? <laughs> hey! <laughs> now, now Harold had to go take a nap afterward. <laughs> but still, that's the point was proven. The point was the school was taught. There was a lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> My best, I had a guy work with me, and I still see him around from time to time. And at the time, I was in my 30s, and uh, I needed help. He was 56, mm -hmm. part, part time, uh, reti partially retired, and he was the best window cleaner. He worked circles around anybody, mm -hmm. you know, and he was 56 at the time. And I've not found anybody besides, you know, like Zane that could that could handle it, you know, like he could. Right. That old, that old man's strength. <laughs>
Well, I want to tell you, Mike, I think the world of you. You um, too. I, I think you're a, a hell of a guy, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to me for a little bit and um, making sure that at least one of these goes up, you know what I mean? <laughs> at, least, at least stay true to my word. <laughs> but I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate the support and the friendship over the years, that's for sure. I know the guys, I know everybody on the Swedish Life podcast just thinks the world of you, Jacob, even though you pick on him all the time. He has nothing but great things to say about you, and Mark mm -hmm. loves you. And you know, me and Seth think you're the best smelling dude there is. Like, I don't know if any, I, I'll just, uh, people, I'll tell people, Mark, you, Mark probably picks on me about it a little bit too much that I want to smell like you. He's like, why do we want to smell like another guy? And Mark and Seth's like, dude, you smells really good. Mike makes his own, I, I call it Mike Musk. That's what I call it. <laughs> but I love that stuff. It's You make your own cologne. It smells so good. You actually were sweet enough to send me a bottle of it, two bottles of it. I love the stuff. It's great. <laughs> Mike Musk. I don't care. You know? Foo-foo spray. Foo -foo, I call it foo -foo. Yeah, you call it foo-foo spray. I call it Mike Musk. But <laughs> I get out of the shower. And, you know. It smells good, man. <laughs> it, uh, I get I get comments on it. It just I like the smell. Yeah, just, maybe I don't know where it came from, but it, it's been good. And I still have my uh, my Bigfoot multi tool is still on my book bag, on my video bag that it's been there since the the huge convention where we actually got to meet, where we killed Fluff Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I sent him a message the other night. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he stayed here at my house, and I sent him a screenshot of him using a wagtail. And I'm like, I miss these good old days, you know, because mm -hmm. he's, he's just doing just, his own. Yeah. You know, and I hadn't heard from him and for every once, you know, maybe six months. That's it. But And the boys are like, hey, when's that guy going to come back and stay with us? And I'm like, which guy? You know, How is he doing? Is he doing good? I, last I talked, he was doing, like, survey work or something last oh, okay. time I been, it's been quite a while since we had a conversation, but okay, well, yeah, that's he, good to know that he's still doing well. So I know maybe maybe we done rent him at the the uh, huge convention. He's like, I'm, I'm I got to stay away from those guys. <laughs> I told him not to come upstairs. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm like, I'm in bed and I wake up in the morning because I wake up early and uh -huh. I'm like, he's not here. Like, <laughs> You know, he should be here. He should be sleeping. Him know? and Seth. Him and Seth were up to no good. Yeah. Up to no good. I was like, man, you sure you want to be hanging out with Seth? You know what I mean? That dude's like done 300 podcasts sipping beers on the side of his mouth. You might not want to hang out with him too long. <laughs> I, who am like me, I'm like a, I don't drink. I'm not much of a drinker. I used to be, but I kind of got away from it because it gives me a bad attitude. And I tend to get in to make poor decisions. So uh, it doesn't make me a very nice person. So I try to stay away from it. I only celebrate, like maybe like I'll drink like for like celebrations, like a wedding or something like that. I'll have a, I'll have some drinks. But I drink one time every year and that's the 4th of July. I feel like that is the best time to be inebriated because there's a chance you could lose a finger. And, America. you know, America, you know, we're celebrating America. So that's the only time I, I indulge. But <laughs> I, uh, hanging out with Seth at the huge convention, I was indulging and I caught myself. I was like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to stop. Because everybody started buying me drinks. And I'm like, no. Once they seen that I would drink one, everybody started handing them to me. And after about an hour, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I, I'll have a Sprite. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, thank you. I'll have yeah. a Sprite. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But Mike, again, I really appreciate you coming on here, buddy. I really do. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Always. Call me anytime. All right, man.